Imaging understands and delivers. Call Dex Imaging today for a free document management evaluation. Cutting your office expenses is as easy as calling Dex Imaging. 352-266-0333. Start saving money today and increase your bottom line with Dex Imaging. Printers, copiers, and fax machines that increase office productivity and save you money. No one understands your bottom line better. Call Dex Imaging today. 352-266-0333. Or check them out on the web at DexImaging.com. That's D-E-X Imaging.com. Or call 352-266-0333 for your free document management evaluation today. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Friday morning. Nice looking Friday. Um, We are about to talk about love. That's right. And sex. And how the two come together. And then health. Uh, Dr. Dudley Danoff has been with us before. He is a men's urologist. He taught on the clinical faculty of UCLA School of Medicine for more than 25 years. He's the founder and president of the Cedar sinai Tower Urology Medical Group in Los Angeles and the senior attending urologist at the Sabin Los Angeles Free Clinic. And he's a best-selling author. His book is called penis power yes right? it is. and we've talked about the book before um and he's back on the phone with us it's valentine's day a week from tomorrow and mm-hmm. sex is a, an important part of a relationship it is right very so we shouldn't important. we shouldn't be embarrassed and shy about it right no it's an important part uh dr danoff good morning doctor good morning larry how are you I'm doing great. So wonderful to uh, speak with you again from sunny Southern California. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. That's why I was wondering if you were still out there. So thank you for getting up early to be with us. That's okay. This is uh, late for a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's I bet late. It is, oh, yeah. really? Really? <laughs> late for a surgeon. Wow. Um, so there, there's a there's a question I have, but I'm I'm reluctant to ask you straight off the bat because I thought maybe that something would come up that I could attach it to. <laughs> but I'm just going to ask you this, okay? And I've already set you up for it, so I might as well ask it. Okay. So I was watching this uh, video. Actually, it was uh, an interview. I think it was on Conan O'Brien. And he had this female doctor on. I don't know what kind of doctor she was. But she was t- talking about milking the prostate. Yes. And how it was healthy for a man. Now, you're on the phone, so I couldn't wait to ask you this question. <laughs> Well, I, I think what she's referring to is something called a prostate massage. I mean, it, it seems odd. That is what so, she said, yes. So in old-time medicine, uh, prostatitis or congestion of the prostate was treated uh, by the urologist by uh, inserting a finger um, in the rectum, which is how you ass- access the prostate, and sort of squeezing the fluid out of the prostate Um, I advise against that. I think it's a terrible practice. I think it creates more problems than it solves. There are much better ways of doing it. Uh, I think it's a terrible idea. Uh, It can cause prostatitis, irritation. I think a wonderful way to, to quote, massage the prostate is uh, for a man to sit in the jacuzzi and uh, get his perineum, his bottom, over the jet, not, not in the rectum, but that area between the base of the scrotum and the anus, um, sit there for five minutes, that's a great way of massaging, it's safe, so I really, as a professional, uh, men's professional, do not recommend milking the prostate or massaging the prostate. Oh, okay. But but, but why is it healthy... <sighs> This is an uncomfortable comp. I'm pretty. I'm. I'm pretty. I'm not. Pr- I'm not prude, but I'm having a hard time with I this. Can't one. wait to comment. Okay. Oh, you have a comment, but no, I can't. Isn't okay when we ejaculate. Isn't that the same stuff? I mean, doesn't it? Just- absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. You know, and without getting too clinical, you know, uh, in the olden days when the French prostitutes uh, did not want to get pregnant. When, was a, when a man was about to climax, what they would do, they would uh, insert a finger in the rectum and press down on the prostate so that they would cause uh, obstruction to the prostate. That would cause retrograde ejaculation. And many uh, of a man in the olden days would 
end up with a flaming prostatitis. Many men died of that. So, oh. you know, this is not uh, this is not child's play. You know, again, okay, I'm a urologist. So. I, I, you know, I wrote a funny, insightful book with the word penis on the cover. Right, and I right. always point out to everybody, penis is not a pejorative word. The penis <laughs> to the urologist is what the stomach is to the gastroenterologist. Right. Is the 21st century get over it you know, we right 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 we but, gotta but, talk about these things without giggling laughing you uh, know. well that's that's okay but I mean it's kind of hard but but no, my, I my, no, I, I, of course I understand Larry and I, but I'm just you know but the, I'm a mainstream <laughs> urologist and I'm trying to get out there let's get the penis <laughs> out of the closet it's Valentine's so we have, we have, right, we have Valentine's some sexy Day. ideas we have some sexy <laughs> ideas but I just wanted to finish the, this thought about this lady <laughs> because yeah. I couldn't ask her and I thought to myself well wait a minute isn't you hear all the time on these little like little sound bites. They'll say, "Hey, you know they they say having sex three times a week is very healthy for you. So so go have some sex." Well, well, isn't that the same thing? Is if if you if a, if a body part is producing a fluid that is supposed to not stay there, it's not supposed to stay where it's being produced. Then the, the normal, the God given way to get rid of it is the way to do it. I'm thinking exactly. I'm, okay. So, so prostate fluid is only partially stored in, in the prostate. There are two little rabbit ears that stick up from the back part of the prostate called the seminal vesicles, and those are really the storage uh, place for the the ejaculate fluid, which is comes from the prostate. So, even if you would quote milk the prostate, I mean, there's no way you could assess. The, the seminal vesicle. So, from a medical point of view, it just can't doesn't make sense. sense. And you know, look, sex is great. Uh, it's great for your mind. It's great for your cardiovascular system. It's great for your pelvic muscles, uh, shoulders, arms. Um, you know, it's the best thing to come down the 405 freeway uh, since chopped liver here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Who, who's your publisher? Uh, Javier. Javier yes, Perez. Yes, Javier. All right, he told us that you had five sexy ideas. Uh, I'm, I want to hear about them. What are they? Well, I mean, let's start right at the top. <laughs> what's, better, what's better on Valentine's Day than just, uh, you know, have sex? I mean, it's one of life's great pleasures. Do women agree with that, or is this a man's thought? Well, it's a way to express love, uh, and not to say nothing of the health benefits. Well, I'm not a woman. Uh, I, am, I am married to one. I have <laughs> a daughter. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, I think that you can certainly try uh, and uh, reason, and then, you know, when all else fails, Larry, you just get down on one knee and you do the old-fashioned begging. That's... <laughs> <laughs> that usually works. Bring in the wine and the chocolate see, and the strawberries and flowers see, but, and but you can have your way, right? Doctor, we, we were talking this morning about some medical practices that are no longer done. And one of them was when a woman was getting irritable and nervous and all that, she would go to see a doctor and he would massage her you know where. Mm-hmm. And then she would feel a lot better. And then the, the article basically said that it was the thought that women didn't have orgasms and therefore they weren't getting them, so they'd go to the doctor to get one, and nobody even realized that that's what they were experiencing. Yes. Well, I mean, certainly we, we don't do that in our practice. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think if we did, we'd all be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you'd have a large clientele. Uh, yeah. A lot, a, lot, a lot of smiling women in Beverly Hills. Like, why are all those women smiling? <laughs> all right. They're so, not even on Rodeo Drive. So, so five yeah. sex ideas. The first one is simply to have sex? That's what. That's the first idea? Well, I mean, I think it's, you know, that's certainly the number one idea for Valentine's Day for me as a practicing urologist. And I mean, the other thing I would like to say is, you know, it, try to invigorate your, your, your love life by... by by changing the venue, changing your position, make, making it uh, more interesting, more challenging. So certainly uh, be adventuresome, and I think Valentine's Day is a perfect day to, uh, to be adventuresome. Okay, we had a guy on one time, he wrote a book. Robin, help me out with this if you can remember anything. He said he had uh, been impotent for t- 10 years or more, yes. and, and he said he can still reach an orgasm even though he doesn't get erect. Right, exactly. Okay. I want to hear your thoughts on that because I'm trying to imagine how that works. Well, you you can. I mean, erect, erections merely pump blood into the penis uh, to make it firm enough for penetration. Uh, but you can still have an orgasm without having an erection. Uh, I mean, because 
the uh, the fluid in the prostate and in sem- seminal vesicles expands those organs, and it can almost be a, a reflex reaction. It's just got to get rid of the fluid. So many, many men are capable of get, having an orgasm and ejecting fluid without getting a firm erection. Okay. When, when, you, when your prostate is removed, is, is, are you no longer doing the fluid thing? Is the fluid gone? So the, the, when we do a radical prostatectomy with the robot, as we do very often for prostate cancer, we, we remove the prostate. So the fluid that carries the sperm, the source of that is gone. But the nerves of potency, uh, the nerves that allow a man to get an erection and have an orgasm are maintained. So, so it's so dry? Is it dry orgasm? It, it's, it's dry for all sense. There are some uh, glands called Cowper's glands mm-hmm. in the penis, so there's a little bit of a sticky fluid that will come out, but, but the fluid that we recognize as seminal fluid w- will no longer be uh, ejected. Uh, Dr. Dudley Seth Danoff is on the phone with us out in Los Angeles, and uh, a week from tomorrow is Valentine's Day, and sex is an important part of our lives. And if you have a question for the doctor, you're welcome to call in. I do have to take a little break first, though, and we'll be right back. If you call right now, 622-9622, I'll put you on hold for about two minutes, and we'll be right back with Dr. Danoff. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. A nice day today, mostly sunny skies and breezy. Maybe a shower along the coast for a time, the high 63 to 67. And partly cloudy tonight, lows ranging from 38 in a few inland spots to about 50 along the coast. Tomorrow, more sun than clouds and milder in the afternoon, the high 67 to 71. On Sunday, a pleasant day with plenty of sunshine, the high 71 to 75. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, Yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we we do that. I need my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new truck. Yep, we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. Join us on Saturday, March 7, 2015 for the second annual Habitat Strawberries Festival at the McPherson Government Complex. The goal of this festival is not only to provide a great time for families in Ocala, but to also raise funds to build a home for our family and our community and support Habitat for Humanity's mission to strengthen communities, build hope, and provide dignified housing solutions. Remember, Saturday, March 7, 2015 for the second annual Habitat Strawberries Festival at the McPherson Government Complex, which starts at 7 a.m. with breakfast. All right, 17 minutes after 11 o'clock. Let's continue with our conversation with Dr. Dudley Danoff. He's out in Los Angeles. His book is called Penis Power, uh, and he's been with us before. He's been become somewhat of a friend, and uh, this, the uncomfortable topic is an important topic. And uh, so if you have a question, don't don't hesitate to call 622-9622. We're talking about some sexy ideas for celebrating Valentine's Day. This morning, we were talking about the, the normal things, like, uh, let's see, it was chocolate and wine and strawberries and flowers. Yes. That was Robin's, Robin's recipe for the perfect Valentine's Day gift. And don't forget the uh, Platinum American Express card. <laughs> <laughs> very, very important. It's very important. No, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think it, human it, contact it, and flowers is a good yeah. idea. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it, 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 it trumps begging. I mean, the card, that is. <laughs> <laughs> so can, can I ask just uh, one question before we get back to the Valentine thing? Sure. When when the females want to become a fellow and then they have that total <sighs> sex transformation oh, there, no. yes. is there any feeling at all down there for the, the fella? Yeah, well, what they try to do is they try to, the feeling is at the tip of the penis, which is called the glands. Um, you know, most people sort of refer to it as the head of the penis. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the head of the penis is, you know, very functional, almost like a clitoris, except it's got a little hole in it. And what the, what we try to do uh, when we do this transformation is we try to preserve the penis and put it in the place that the clitoris would be. Oh, okay. So we do try to preserve sen- some sensitivity. Obviously, you know, you're removing so much tissue that in- innervation is often interrupted, and it's really not as good as the old uh, the old gland. But but we do make an attempt to preserve that. Oh, okay. And what about the other way? The the, the Cher's daughter. 
What, what about well, when... Again, I, you know, I'm not privy to her surgery, and I don't know what she had and how radical a procedure he, she had. Uh, but so I, I'm, I'm really, I don't feel qualified to talk about that. Oh, I mean, okay. com- not talk about it, comment on it. I mean, I would be guessing like any, any, any lay person. Okay. I, I just don't know the answer. Okay, just needed to ask. All right. Uh, so, so, so the five things that are, will make for a nice, sexy Valentine's Day after... The platinum card, the chocolate, the flowers, <laughs> the, the strawberries, and the wine. Yes. <laughs> well, I certainly, I certainly, for my third thing on my list would be, especially for a man, is uh, don't let performance anxiety ruin your Valentine's Day. You know, most men measure themselves against a standard built built on a fantasy. It's not reality. But, you know, in my opinion, to avoid performance anxiety, you just have to remember that there is an enormous variety among men with respect to sex drive, capacity, preferences, standards of satisfaction. So uh, the power of positive thinking, don't let a negative thought enter your mind. Uh, So keep performance anxiety out of Valentine's Day. Do you know what, what's an interesting thing about that, though, is that women are often chastised for faking orgasms, right? But but I always think of it this way, that it's kind of like the Seinfeld comedy bit where he says, you can fake it, we don't care. <laughs> but, but I've all... <laughs> right. That's a good... Look, a man, a man wants to be appreciated. I think there's nothing sexier to a man, you know, than, oh my God, honey, you are the best. That's the <laughs> biggest one I ever saw. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> every man, every every man knows it's a lie, but we love it. <laughs> yeah, but it, at that point, you're like kind of punch drunk or something, so you listen to anything. I mean, you you hear what, right? Well, Larry, you know, a man with an erection has got the mentality of about a four year old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like hypnotized. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, my, my father, may he rest in peace, always used to say, he said, you know, when I'm hard, I'm soft. And when I'm soft, I'm hard. <laughs> oh, that makes a lot of sense. Your father said that to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, many years ago. You have a good, had a good relationship. My father would have never said that to me. <laughs> my, my father. As a matter of fact, I think he said that to me the week after my bar mitzvah. <laughs> oh, no. no. <laughs> See, I, I, th- I think my dad said that if you, if you drink this like juice, you'll get lead in your pencil. And I said, what does that mean? He said, Just, don't, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, does uh, uh, age have anything to do with having a fun Valentine's Day? Oh, absolutely. It age, uh, age is uh, love is ageless, and it begins with a confident approach. So, if you're healthy enough to get out of bed and brush your teeth in the morning, you, you're, you're healthy enough and able enough to have sex. Now, it might take you all night to do what you used to do all night long, <laughs> but, uh, but still. <laughs> But still, you know, there's a lot of sexuality uh, in the aging and the older. You know, people are living longer and they're living healthier lives and they're running faster and jumping higher. Oh, doctor, I want to I want to tell you a sweet story uh, from something Robin and I witnessed. Uh, it was kind of have a, a sad beginning, but it's a sweet ending, which is good. I, I like stories that have a happy ending. Not to have a, not to have a pun there, I, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anyway, Robin and I play music when we're not doing radio, and a lot of times we'll just play at nursing homes, and so there's a there's a, a facility here that we played at back in September or so, and the, there's a man who comes in all the time to listen to us. He's an old German man, right? Mm-hmm. And and so he knew all the old German songs and he loved them, and we and he told us one day that he had three weeks to live because his kidneys were not functioning. And so we said, oh my goodness. And his, his brain was all there. He's, his, he was sharp-witted. He must have been close to 90, if not over 90, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so when, when we went back at the, in December, I was looking for him. I said, he must have passed because he's not here. And, um, and in fact, when we were there in September, we overheard him giving his stuff away. He was talking to one of the other residents and said, no, this is a good wristwatch. You can have it. I'm not going to need it anymore. So in December, we think he's dead, right? And he, no sooner did we think that. Here he comes walking down the hall, hand in hand with this woman, smiling as can be, sits down in one big easy chair next to her in the other easy chair, hand in hand. And I said, he fell in love. Look at him. He's got more life in him than we've ever seen. Yeah. And we asked the lady who was like in charge and she said, yeah, exactly. That's what happened. He was, he was depressed. He thought he was dying. This woman moved in and he's back to normal. He still has a low kidney function, 
but he's still living. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Isn't that well, love? Love is uh, there's there's nothing like love. <laughs> nothing like love. Yeah, yeah. You know, and 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 the, uh, the 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 fifth point I wanted to make, which is exactly pertinent to this story, is you know the best aphrodisiac is not what you might think it is. It's not rhinoceros horn or goat testes. The best. <laughs> The best uh, uh, aphrodisiac is love itself. Uh, there's no, there's nothing that works more magic than love if it's from the heart, deep in your gut, from the inner parts of your soul. It's love. Oh, love absolutely, aphrodisiac. Absolutely, boy. Can I tell you a little story? I, I knew a guy who fell in love, and and this guy was a, you know. He, he didn't mind uh, having one night stands before, but once he fell in love, he would never have the one night stands anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, he even was at an event where there were, and I know this sounds very crude, but there were prostitutes offering themselves to, to all the guys. It was one of these big, high record company functions mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm ashamed to say I was part of. <laughs> but, but, but he comes out. <laughs> but, he, but he wouldn't do anything. He was, he was being offered, and he said, no, 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 I'm in love. I don't want to do anything with anybody. When I get home, I'll, I'll take care of whatever I need to take care of because I'm in love. I just thought that was the sweetest thing. Yeah, look, it's great. It's great. It, you know, it reminds me of the an old expression of the, the old guy said, I love my wife, but oh, you kid. You know that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So how are things for you? How's, how's, um, how's the book going? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's going very, very well. You know, and we've talked about this before. You know, if you know the cover of the book, it's got this funny little symbol uh, uh, with the I and right. the W, and so uh, it's amazing that the, a lot of the mainstream press pushes back on that. And I say, you know, at this point, I'm trying to make always about uh, penis is not a pejorative word. We have Howard Stern. You've got videos, and in today's world, you know, to be embarrassed about that, it's you know, the book is insightful. It's funny. It's medically accurate. It's tongue in cheek. I mean, it just amazes me uh, as a mainstream urologist how much pushback there is. Oh, don't say the word penis too much on the radio. You can refer to it once in a while, but don't say it too much. Yeah, right. But give me a, give me a break. But for, but for, but for the listeners, and I know we have a lot of older listeners. Let me let right. me let me. Tell you, if you have any questions about your own sexuality, and it's one of those things. Remember the book, everything you want to know about sex, but we're afraid to ask. Yes. Well, yeah. well, you're still afraid to ask it because I just <laughs> it's just human nature. You're afraid to ask it. Yes. The, the book is your way of getting the answers to those questions. I, yes, and it, you know it's done. It's done in the easy read it's not technical even though you know i'm a technical guy and a technical surgeon transplants prostate cancer kidney cancer that's what i do all day long but the book has nothing to do with technicalities it's not a how-to book it's just informative and funny but but i'm i'm just amazed that the uh, it's just been picked up to be translated into five languages. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited about it. I didn't give up my day job, <laughs> Larry, but, <laughs> but, but, I'm, but I'm excited about it. That is exciting, yeah. Uh, what's really wonderful about you, Doctor, is that you are on the uh, surgical side of everything, but you also recognize the romantic side and the intimate side, and that seems to take priority over the physical. Well, I think it's all part of it. I think it's part of being a complete person. I think if you're just a technocrat, you know, you're half a person. If you're just a romantic, uh, you also have something missing. So I think it's all about balance, you know, getting the right, the, the right balance and the right touch. I think it's hard to be a poetic urologist, but I'm trying. <laughs> you're doing a great job, believe me. Well, these, these tips are wonderful. And, and it is something, I mean, I, maybe we shouldn't giggle at it, but we, we do, but there's a part of us that when we're all by ourselves, we want to know, hey, I got this issue going on, let me read about it, and then, oh, that's all it is? Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, your listeners can go to, to my what, website, penispowerbook.com. There's a really a lot of good stuff there. I blog, I tweet, uh, so there's a lot of good information out there, you know, written in a way that the layman can understand it. And anybody that wants to call me directly in Los Angeles, I'm busy, but I always uh, make time available. And if they're out this way, visit me at Cedar sinai Medical Center. Love to say hello. Yeah, we would like to see you. We'd have to come out and see you. You, you say, wow, you're the radio people. You probably, you probably <laughs> yeah. have a lot of radio people, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Doctor, thank you for being on the air with us. Uh, I, I love L.A., by the way. One of these days I'm going to get back. But. Well, uh, it's always a, a Larry and Robin, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and say hello to all my friends uh, in uh, Florida. <laughs> all right. If, if you have any questions at all, uh, you can call us. We'll give you the information. Uh, penispowerbook.com is the website. Dr. Yeah. Dudley Seth Danoff, D-A-N-O-F-F. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for being on the air with us, and have a great Valentine's Day. Yeah, pleasure, pleasure. You too. It's always fun, always fun. All right, we will take a little break, and we'll have fun with Joe when we come back. This is WOCA Ocala. Mm-hmm.